All right, on this video of Ivy Built, we take a deep dive into this motor and figure out if it's actually gonna be worth keeping in this truck or if we need to switch gears and do something different. So, we got the old Optima out and uh, turn it over, the motor turns over, um, which is good, it's what we wanted. I thought the Optima was like just low on juice because it would like, you know, like the starter would get hung up. It would start to crank and then it wouldn't do anything. I got out the old battery charger and hooked it up. That broke right there, that's just lovely. Anyways, so I got a fix for that. I noticed uh, once we get the battery charger hooked up to it, it would crank over, but it would still hang up from time to time. So I pulled the starter out, checked it out, make sure the wires weren't like grounding out or doing anything goofy, and uh, put it back in. It would do it again, took it back out, um, and I just couldn't figure out. It was actually sparking right there. Made sure that the motor was grounded to the frame, uh, uh, so the negative battery cable goes straight to the motor. The motor is grounded to the frame. Um, got all that done. Couldn't figure it out. Talked to a buddy of mine, which I know is going to watch this video. Hey, Brad. Thanks for the help, man. Since we could hook it up to the battery charger out here with the starter button, um, we knew that, you know, like the starter worked fine there. But you put it in the uh, car, and you try it, uh, and I guess because it's under load, but it would spark. I went and got a, a cheap reman starter. Um, I had them search a 74 Chevy C10. They didn't have it in stock. I said, well, let's check an 85. Pulled it out. The nose looks the same. Size of the gear looks the same. Everything looks the same. Uh, same offset bolt pattern, all that good jazz. So I'm gonna put this in and get it hooked back up with just the passive positive battery cable going to it so the key's not gonna work. I'm just gonna use the uh, starter button and we'll see what happens. So what do you think? What's the uh, diagnosis? Just, so what do we got there? Explain to us. I don't know, you did this, you did this. Well, I did, I just pressed a button. What? Which button? This. All right. So what did I explain to you? Uh, here, I don't know. I was too focused on root beer. Oh, he's been drinking root beer. All right. So I ran a compression test. Um, this one right here, I was actually using a different fitting uh, that was just didn't go in the next hole. So I switched fittings. It was significantly higher. So just to make it standard, I used the same fitting that I used in all the other ones. I went back and I redid this one. It was higher, um, but yeah, not too bad. the motor overall has good compression. Um, they always say you want all the cylinders to be within 10% of each other. And they are, except for cylinder number two, which is significantly higher. Uh, I cranked on each cylinder three times um and kind of took the average which you know each each time i ran each cylinder it was all pretty consistent within two three psi so um yeah i think i'm gonna run with that uh, i took uh i took my little camera probe looked in cylinder number eight because sorry this is a this is a mess cylinder number eight spark plug one two three four five six seven, was this one right here and uh, it was pretty wet and soaked. It actually had 
it wasn't oil it was too thin to be oil it looked like muddy water uh, and I was a little concerned so I stuck my camera pro down in there um, no standing water inside a little bit of flash rushing on the cylinder wall <coughs> um, but all in all I mean looked decent I don't think uh, for this specific motor there's any reason to actually open it up uh, I am gonna pull it out and uh, check the valve train on it um, reseal it paint it clean it up new oil pump new water pump uh, that kind of thing um, when I first got the truck I put the Excel cap and rotor on it the new wires so all that stuff is good these heat boots were on the old wires that were actually on this motor um, so I just slid them on there uh, can't hurt anyways so yeah so I think the motor is in really good shape uh, like I said I'm gonna pop the valve covers and you know just continue checking it out what I didn't go over in the clip when we were doing the compression test which I obviously didn't film that but what I used was my uh, snap-on compression tester and this is an old one it was actually given to me by my father-in-law I believe um, loves doing um, buying old tools from auctions but it's a pretty complete compression tester it's got a bunch of different leads uh, it's got the small one and then of course the gauge um, that's what I was able to um, screw into the uh, spark plug hole and do the compression test the nice thing about this is I can actually take the lead that I used to do the compression test with, which was this one, um, and because it's got the air nipple on it, when I go to do the valve stem seals, I will be able to screw this into the hole, take the valve spring retainers off without the valves dropping down into the cylinder, and replace my valve stem seals. So, multi-use. At least, in theory, that's how I hope this works. When we were actually doing the work, one of the things that I did not show or go over or even discuss was the second test that I did on this motor. It's the cooling system. So I have a uh, Matco RPT100C radiator pressure tester and a pretty simple device. Uh, just hooked this up where the radiator cap goes and uh, pumped it up to 16 PSI and then I left it there forever but I chose that because most radiator caps are between 13 and 16 PSI somewhere around there and I thought going on the high end was good this is uh, kind of a goofy like chrome radiator cap it has no um, number on it saying what pressure it holds or what pressure it opens up at filled up the um, radiator with um, just water, I just used regular water because I'm draining everything out because I'm gonna pull the motor out of this thing and I did not want to waste antifreeze. Uh, I let it bleed by uh, squeezing the upper hose so I could kind of pump some of the air out. Worked pretty good. Put this on there, uh, pumped it up to 16 PSI, left it for like 40 minutes, maybe dropped a half a pound. So that tells me that I don't have any head gasket issues. I feel pretty confident about that. Now, is that the right way to do it? I don't know. With everything that we've done to this, I feel like this motor is in great shape. I don't feel like I need to do anything special to it. I am gonna pull the motor and the transmission out, not because of the motor, because I want to clean up the front frame because we are pretty much redoing the whole front steering and suspension, clean up the firewall, and I can just really have my way with this thing. I just want to enjoy it. As far as this motor goes, I feel very good about it. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna take it out, get it up on a motor stand. Uh, I am gonna take the intake manifold off of it. I'm gonna clean it up, new valve stem seals, valve cover gaskets, oil pan gasket. Uh, I'm gonna check the rear main seal, make sure that's good. I'm not sure yet if it's a two-piece rear main or a one-piece rear main, but basically I wanna get the motor sealed up to where I can put it back in here. I know it's not gonna leak. It's not gonna burn oil anymore. 
and uh, get it back in here and get it looking good. New oil pump, new water pump. Just make sure it's in it for the long haul uh, until I get to a point to where we're gonna revisit the powertrain, drivetrain on this beast uh, and maybe do something cooler or different. Um, you never know what's gonna happen. So with that being said, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next video. All right, I do have to show you. What? My son's a big Donut Media fan. I got him this shirt. Turn around. More power, baby. That's what this thing should have one day.